Hey guys. So what I'm thinking is making a, a six to eight inch trout swim bait in a, in a brown trout pattern. I'm thinking maybe a two piece swim bait with a lip on it that I could use to go chase the big brown trout in October. Anyway, I'm pretty excited about it. So let's get started. So I was doing some research about trout and I came across this article online from Montana Angler and it was talking about pursuing these big brown trout in the fall. And um, while this is kind of a fly fishing article, I thought it would maybe translate into the kind of lures that I make. Since I've been kind of getting into swim bait fishing, um, a lot of the stuff they're talking about sounds exactly like swim bait fishing for large bass, you know, upsized tackle, um, expecting to catch fewer fish because you're using bigger baits. These fish get so big, they don't really chase flies as much anymore. I mean, they still will, but um, they kind of switch over to pursuing bigger meals less often. And so if, if a big brown trout eats a 12 inch uh, rainbow, it's not gonna be hungry for a couple of days. And so that can really slow down the number of fish that you catch. 
but uh, they were talking about using these streamers that were anywhere from six inches to 12 inches long. And I thought, man, that sounds exactly like what I'd like to do. Unfortunately, October is behind us, so it'll have to wait till next year before I can actually chase these big fish. But while I'm pretty excited about it, I think I'd like to go ahead and get started on making these so that I can have a few to take with me.
But at this stage, we have to take an educated guess at how to ballast this and weight it, uh, counteract the buoyancy of the wood. And what I like to do is take these little rounds that I've made. Um, I can take some hot glue here and stick them on there temporarily. Maybe one there. And then this is a big piece of wood, so let's put a bigger one right here. We just take a guess at uh, where we think the weight should be. And then we'll go take it over to the tank and try it out. But this allows us to snap off these pieces and, and try different configurations and kind of get closer to what, uh, what needs to be done. Yeah, that's level. Biggest thing for me is for it to be level. It could be a faster sinker, slower sinker. Depends on what you want it to do. I'm, fat, I'm fine with having a variety. Some that sink faster, some that sink slower. Okay, like I said earlier, I can just snap those off of there. I'm going to set these in order. So I can kind of gauge about how much I'm going to need. We'll set that there and then we'll give it about 30 minutes to set up, I believe is what it says.
ready to get started painting, but before I do that, I'm going to wipe this down lightly with some rubbing alcohol here. And the reason we do that is to make sure that there's no oils or anything like that on the, on the foil that's going to uh, prevent paint from adhering properly. I want to introduce a new tool I recently acquired for lure making, and that is the Cricut Maker. The first thing I need to do is make a pattern for a stencil. So what I'm doing here is I'm using Adobe Photoshop to make my pattern, and then I'm going to drop that into the Cricut software. Here I can lay out my pattern on a virtual cutting board, and then once I get it situated the way I want, I can send it to the actual cutter. Now this machine will cut whatever shape I want uh, in a variety of materials, but in this case, I'm gonna be using blue painter's tape to create a stencil for painting with. This machine has a lot of potential applications for lure making, so you'll probably see it on a few upcoming videos as I become familiar with what it can do. first color I want to apply to this is going to be a yellow for the belly of the brown trout. And so I'm going to try adding some of this um, pinata alcohol ink. This is the, what is it, sunburst, sunbright yellow. As always with alcohol inks, I'm going to wear a respirator and I've also got um, ventilation going as well. I kind of wanted to go over my next few steps before I mask up again. Um, with these alcohol inks, what I like to do is lock those in place uh, by putting a little bit of this Kmar varnish on there, maybe one or two little uh, coats of that. And then I also like to go over it with one or two coats of this UV clear. And the reason for that is these uh, alcohol inks are pretty bad about fading uh, in the sunlight. So if we put some UV clear on there, it'll protect it and, and keep it in there really well. Um, once I've got those two clear coats put on there, I'm gonna spray a thin line of opaque white down the center line of the belly.
I'm going to wind up putting a couple of clear coats on this lure and uh, of course I like to use true coat these days. So let's mix up a little bit of that. Just pulled this off of the drying wheel and it looks pretty good. Uh, the next step here is going to be covering the seams on the foil at the top and the bottom and you can barely even see it, but uh, I'm gonna put a thin line of detail raw umber down the middle here. And then on the belly, we're gonna do a really thin line of opaque white. Uh, I'm also going to paint the tail. All we got to do now is let that ink dry and then I'll put another clear coat on it and get back with you when it's time for final assembly.
Now that this uh, clear coat is finished and I've assembled uh, the whole thing, it's time to weigh it and measure it. Uh, but first, I want to have a quick little comparison here of hooks. Uh, now, my original intent was to use these single inline hooks, and for that, I was planning on using these owner 2 aught hooks. Those weigh 1.29 grams for a set of those. However, uh, I kind of like to have the option of trebles as well. I'd probably go with these size 4 uh, 3X hooks. And those weigh 1.47 grams, which is only a little bit more. It's it's not a it's not a ton of difference between the two. Let's throw this on there. I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it back on ounces. 2.19 by itself, but we're gonna put a set of hooks and a set of split rings on there, which gets us to two and a quarter ounces. So that's pretty good. And then let's also take a measurement. Our final length, six and a quarter, six and a quarter inches. Anyway, let me uh, pop those hooks on here and then we'll take it out and do some swim testing. Here's to sink level. So slow, it has a little bit of a shimmy. Let's go a little bit faster. Faster it really moves. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe so I can make more of the content you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.